You are in your next job interview and the recruiter is asking you the following question. Tell me about your strengths. What are your strengths? How do we answer this question? I'm going to talk about this in this video, so stick around. Hey, what's cooking guys? This is Marcel from Slamming It Out and thank you for watching this video and thanks for tuning in. And uh, thank you for uh, tuning in because today we have a very, very important uh, question to tackle and I'm going to talk about it. I will tell you uh, what you have to, to say and how do you have to uh, how you have to prepare yourself to answer the following question uh, when you are sitting in an interview be it a video interview online or face to face tell me about your strengths ha this is a question you will uh, you will hear a lot and uh, you better uh, get prepared because it is also a tricky question every question you've been asked uh, it's it's kind of psychological and the recruiter or the human resources officer, human resources manager, your future boss, your potential employer uh, want and will read between the lines. So what you should not do definitely is to, to uh, brag uh, and say stuff like uh, I'm the best person for this job because I'm so great and uh, everybody else is stupid. So now of course I'm exaggerating here. What you need to know in order to really uh, nail this question and uh, sell yourself properly is to understand that this question, um, tell me about your strengths, is the best invitation for you to really sell yourself. This is really the first great opportunity to sell yourself properly, and, but of course you have to know how to do it not in a silly way or in a professional way. So we have to understand and know that you have to... We, we have talked about this in the previous video, so now here, go check them out. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm not getting tired to always repeat that uh, uh, doing a job interview is all about selling yourself. If you don't like to sell, then uh, don't do it. Don't, don't sell yourself. Don't even sell yourself. Then don't, don't, uh, then stay away from any job interview. If you, if you, if you, if you feel too shy to sell yourself, you have to learn it. You have to kind of get comfortable with this idea. And it's not only an idea. It's a very practical thing because a lot of, uh, uh, things depend on this thing. If you don't get a job, you don't earn money. What are you going to do? So get used to it. Get comfortable with the fact of selling yourself. Yeah, we talked about the job description. Every professional employer is coming up with the job description, which you can read when you receive the uh, description for the job, the online posting, or wherever you see the job advertisement, right? So study the job description. That's what I've discussed in the previous videos. And uh, look for these keywords, you know, like, for example, in my, uh, uh, I'm a chef, executive chef, so there will always, uh, the job description will always have the following keywords, hands-on, international experience, and, uh, and, and these kind of things, you know, practical, of course, leadership abilities, and many other things. Uh, so this is what they're looking for. So you want to study the job description and uh, see what they are looking for. And you take out these traits, skills or attributes and then you build a story around that. Of course, it would be great if your true strength match these requirements because then automatically and naturally you feel much more comfortable also during the interview. But like I always say, selling yourself and selling any other product, and in this case you are the product, always involves exaggerating. Yeah, I'm not talking, uh, I'm not talking about exaggerating massively like a snake oil salesman, for example, but you have to exaggerate. Like I said in the previous video as well, um, if you are selling a car, let's say you, ha you own a car and you need money, you want to sell it. Okay. How do you sell it? You know, uh, do you wash it? Do you polish it? Do you make everything nice with the interior? Do you wipe everything or you just uh, dump it on the street and then you wait for the next best stupid guy uh, uh, 
uh, wanting to buy your car. It's not going to happen that way, right? You, you want to you want to make sure the car is in the best possible condition, you know? So that's the same with uh, with the job interview. So a little bit of exaggeration is always helpful. It needs to be, you have to dose it, you know, like seasoning a little bit. You know, you imagine you cook food and you don't put seasoning inside. The food is, is boring, you, that has no taste, and then uh, next time you will not eat it again. So here, Taylor, uh, Taylor, make your uh, question. Uh, tailor your questions according to the to the job descriptions, and always use a story. Not just say I have great leadership abilities, and uh, my strength is that I'm hands on. Uh, for example, in my case, in the kitchen, I could say I have great leadership abilities, and I am a hands on chef, and I have great international experience. That might be true and it sounds nice, but it also on the other side, it uh, doesn't say anything because I'm just throwing out nice words. So again, and the other thing what I always uh, will repeat in my videos, uh, what you uh, will constantly hear is that you always want to use stories. Story, story, story. Storytelling is so important. Why? Because when you share or tell a story, then it doesn't matter with whom you share the story, be it your friend or girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, whatever, fiance, uh, grandmother, uh, recruiter. Uh, when you share a story, number one, people somehow will relate. Yeah. And number two, even more important is uh, they will memorize it uh, way better than if you just throw facts at them. And this is the same with uh, in, a, in a job interview because you know how many uh, how many mm, interview candidates the recruiter is interviewing each day or each week? You know, they, they all hear, hear that so many times the same keywords and buzzwords. Yeah, I'm a strong leader and I am uh, an approachable uh, guy and uh, I've traveled a lot, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't actually say anything. So you want to come up with the story. In my case, I would say my greatest strengths. So if so imagine, um, you are the interviewer and now you're asking me, hey, Marcel, can you tell me a little bit about your strengths? What is, uh, what is, what are you strong at, you know? And then I would say, yeah, my greatest strengths is definitely my international experience because I traveled a lot and I've worked in Europe. I started off in Europe. I went to the United States and then uh, uh, further on, I traveled to Asia and I spent more than 10 years in Southeast Asia in many different countries like Indonesia, Malaysia and Vietnam, for example, and I also have work experience in the Middle East. Yeah. So by saying, by naming these countries, the recruiter already gets an idea. Oh, wow, this guy is really well traveled. That tells me that he has really international experience because he worked with different people from different countries with different mentalities, with different mindsets, you know. So that shows me that uh, he relates probably very well to many different cultures, which is very important, which is also one aspect of leadership. So I would continue then, of course, that I, like I said, I've worked in many different countries. And I would also say one of my greatest strengths definitely is that I relate well to many different cultures. And how can I prove that? Because when you look through my CV or my resume or the recruiter, he, he, before the interview, he would have studied my CV and he would clearly see that I spent, let's say 80% of my time, my career, uh, at least one or two years in one position, you know? So if I stay like one or two years, let's say in Malaysia, in the jungle of Borneo, where, where I really worked, a tough territory, you know? If I manage to, let's say, survive two years in the jungle of Borneo, then it also tells the recruiter, man, this, this guy is really relating well to, uh, to many different cultures because how can he manage to stay two years over there if he is not relating well to many different cultures, because if you do not relate well to many different cultures, you will not survive. That means you get either fired from your job because you don't get along with these people because of different reasons, you know, uh, or you just resign because of different reasons. And just to 
throw this uh, short story in. I have seen a few expatriate chefs, Western guys, who got kicked out uh, from their job because they did not get along with these local people, which is very important. I think I have made a, a, a video already about this topic. If you want me to talk about this in a separate video, though, please let me know. Yeah, so relating well to many different cultures is one of my greatest strengths because I need to get along with these people. I need to, and, and therefore I'm, I, I consider myself also an, a very uh, adaptable person. Yeah, or adoptable or adaptable. I'm not quite sure now what's the, the, the proper English word, but that, that means I'm, 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 I can adopt to many different situations. That means I'm flexible, you know. So this is just a short example here. What I would tell the recruiter in my interview if they would ask me what are my greatest strengths. So uh, I would probably name two or three, that's, that's enough. You, you don't want to ramble on and on and on and on. Give them two maximum, I would say three strength and back them always up with a story. You know? um, if I would also include the fact that I consider myself a hands-on chef, then I also would back it up with the story like, you know, when I worked in uh, Indonesia, for example, and my kitchen staff, uh, uh, we had plenty of stuff. That was not the issue. We had enough manpower. But the problem was that many of the folks were not trained properly. Yeah. So that was not the fault of the staff because some or most of them never visited a culinary school, for example. Yeah. So this is actually just an example. Yeah, uh, some of the stuff visited culinary schools, but uh, so if some of the stuff has never seen a culinary school from inside, what you have to do as a, as a chef, then you have to jump in, work with the people, train the people, you know, pull, pull uh, off, you know, your sleeve and then um, uh, get to work, you know, and then I would share the story how, when we were busy in the kitchen and a lot of uh, events, uh, we had a lot of events going on that I uh, uh, were jumping in and uh, helping the team because their knowledge was limited and uh, there was no other way to get things done other than I had to jump in and also uh, do follow-up trainings. You know, so always backing the things up with the story is very important to make it uh, more memorable to the recruiter, you know, and they will remember these stories, you know, and so more emotional you make the stories. I mean, it need, no need to be dramatic like a, a, a Hollywood laugh movie, you know, but um, if you can inject a little bit of emotion, you know, it's always good because the more emotional it gets, then uh, of course, you want to uh, share stories with positive emotion mostly. Uh, so it's more memorable. And this is what you need to keep in mind. You want, uh, you want to make yourself more memorable in the mind of the interviewer. Why? Because this interviewer is, is interviewing so many different people for one job. You know, they have, uh, uh, I know of uh, the job interviews uh, where uh, in my case, over 150 chefs applied for one position and I was the one who got the job. So how do you do that? That's what we are talking about in this video. So storytelling, to make yourself memorable, to stand out because they will remember your story and they will relate also most likely to one of your stories because they are human beings as well. The recruiters, they have worked in different positions and they have experienced many, many crazy things and different things and difficult things, happy things and sad things. They are human beings. So storytelling story always connects you much better to the other people and uh, in return they will, they will relate to you much better. Okay, that's it for today. I hope I could uh, give you tips here how to handle, how to deal with this question. I hope you, you are better equipped now. If not, then please, of course, let me know in the comment sections, uh, in the comment section below. Drop your answers, drop your questions, drop your suggestions, drop your feedback. Uh, if you want me to elaborate further on this, uh, I'm happy to do that. There's much more to talk about this topic, but here I can only go into the most important uh, things, of course. You know, I don't want to bore you too much. 
because maybe one of you is already a heavyweight champion in interviewing and or conducting interviews who knows anyway so if you like this video then please click this like button give me a thumbs up share this video with a friend and if you find this content useful then please subscribe to my channel uh, I will continue with these uh, with this video series. In the next video, we're gonna talk about what are your weaknesses. Also, a very famous question, always uh, uh, always being asked, and it's not a famous question because nobody wants to talk about their weaknesses. You know, everybody wants to talk about their strengths. Yeah, I'm good in this. I'm the champion. I'm the hero. I'm the best guy or girl in the world. But uh, tell me about your weaknesses. No, I don't have any weaknesses. No, there's no way that uh, you know. Uh, you know, you cannot say that, but we're going to talk about it in the next video. So, yeah, stick around, subscribe to my channel if you uh, if you like the content. Uh, and thanks for my new subscribers, of course. Yeah, the channel is growing, always going up. Uh, that's good to hear. Check out the description for other uh, 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 social media accounts uh, are all in the description. Check my description also for my Udemy online classes. Uh, I'm on Udemy and Skillshare. There you can find different courses I've done on leadership and persuasion. More courses uh, will follow. And by the way, I'm now on the stage of preparing a new, uh, a new Udemy online class, which is exactly about the topic I'm talking now in these videos, you know. Uh, how to ace your next job interview is most likely the title of this class. It's gonna be three or four hours long and then it is much more detailed. It goes in, in much more depth than we talk about in this video. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe. And before I check out, don't forget also to visit my website www.marclr.com Come, see you next week. Don't forget to tune in. Stay healthy, stay safe. Uh, take care and bye-bye.